these SHBG molecules, they bind to the testosterone, which is a good thing because it allows it to then transport it to other parts of the body through the bloodstream without it just dissipating. But if you've got too much of it, Hello everyone and welcome to our new video. Today we're going to be talking about SHBG, which stands for Sex Hormone Binding Globulin. Now this is really important for the diagnosis of patients who might have low testosterone. It's also quite important for understanding whether someone's going to be good on treatment, if the treatment's going to be effective for them. So to start off, Tom, what is SHBG? So SHBG is a glycoprotein that's produced by the liver and its main function is to bind to androgens and estrogen for the purpose of transporting them around the body and the blood. And this is because steroid hormones in general have an extremely short half-life, meaning they are metabolized very, very quickly in their free form. So SHBG serves to act as a buffer or a reservoir of sorts to stop androgens and estrogens being metabolized, but also because they're lipids, they're fat molecules, they're also not soluble in the water-based plasma of the blood. So it also serves to actually physically transport it around as well as inhibiting hormones from being metabolized too quickly. And that's essentially to ensure that all your tissues throughout your body are supplied with an appropriate amount of hormone, irrespective of how far they are from the site of synthesis, which in men is obviously the testes. It's extremely important, but like you said, when levels are too high or too low, it can have an impact on both the pre-diagnostic criteria for treatment and then the type of intervention that is implemented and often how it's actually implemented too. So effectively SHBG allows the testosterone and estrogen to get to the, the cells around the body. Some people don't know this but hormones are literally impacting everywhere in your body pretty much. That's why they're quite interesting and that's why they have such a huge number of effects on the body. Having too little of SHBG is actually quite a bad thing as well as having too much of it as you just said Tom. So we've talked about why it's important but what happens when you have too much shbg as a man in particular yeah so for hormones to be able to exert their action they have to go inside of the cell and bind to their respective receptors so testosterone and dihydrotestosterone will bind to the androgen receptor and that will stimulate the production of certain proteins that are involved in things like muscle growth which is why testosterone is anabolic but also in the growth of skin hair and nails and systemic protein synthesis in general and estrogen acts through a similar mechanism by binding to estrogen receptors inside the cell, although obviously that has contrasting and oftentimes antagonistic effects. For androgens and estrogens to actually enter the cell, they have to be free. So when SHBG is bound to these hormones, they're unable to actually enter the cell. So what you can have is a situation whereby the overall amount of testosterone in the blood is normal. The amount of testosterone being produced by the testes is normal, but because SHBG is elevated on the cellular level, you have a deficiency of testosterone. The actual binding to the androgen receptor or estrogen receptor inside the cells is deficient and that can produce all of the symptoms of, of low testosterone like low mood, low muscle mass, weight gain, fatigue, things like that even though testosterone production overall is normal. These these SHBG molecules, they bind to the testosterone which is a good thing because it allows it to then transport it to other parts of the body through the bloodstream without it just dissipating but if you've got too much of it, it almost clings onto it because it, it can't get to those cells effectively anymore because there's too many of them wanting to hold on to and bind to the testosterone. So it remains in the blood rather than being in the cells and that obviously causes a problem. We mentioned this in the last video but we see this a lot where guys have a high SHBG level yeah. and actually they still have symptoms despite having a supposedly normal total testosterone or a good total testosterone even and it's something that we see in a lot of older guys in particular I think. We'll get onto that later but also they tend to do really well on TRT, guys who have a higher SHBG. Moving on from that, what happens when SHBG levels are too low? So what happens if you have a poor level of SHBG? So one of the functions of SHBG is to actually modulate the ratio of dihydrotestosterone, testosterone and estradiol. SHBG has the highest affinity for DHT, then testosterone and then estradiol. When you have too low SHBG, you can actually get an excessive amount of free hormone. The ratio between those three is heavily skewed and that is associated with, generally speaking, people with lower SHBGs. Again, this is a generalization, but tend to do worse with regards to symptomatic improvement. 
they seem to be more susceptible to developing symptoms that are associated with excessive hormones in general. So they might be more prone to anxiety, restlessness, water retention, issues like that. So that's typically what we see when SHBG is too low. And, and oftentimes you can do your very best to try and identify the underlying cause there. That's not always possible and then it's often hard to attribute causation. So I guess when these SHBG molecules bind and help it to travel around the body, if that's not possible then you don't get them to the cells as much because they just dissipate and presumably as you said DHT takes up more of those kind of binding sites which means that some of the other hormones don't get around the body as much and then they cause more side effects. You mentioned causes there a little bit. What are some of the causes of having a high and a low sex hormone binding globulin? So SHBG is modulated by numerous different inputs so it's often hard to attribute causation to a single hormone or, or a single molecule because it's multifaceted but in terms of what can cause elevated SHBG it's quite rare but hyperthyroidism and excess of thyroid production from the thyroid gland can stimulate excessive production of SHBG so that's always something to, to rule out and any pre-diagnostic blood test when considering the initiation of TRT should always include an investigation into thyroid function typically TSH and free thyroxine at the minimum but sometimes free T3 as well so that's always ruled out. Liver disease because SHBG is actually produced by the liver dysfunction to the liver can obviously cause elevations or deficiencies depending on what pathology is present there. One of the other main causes is elevated estrogen. So androgens actually inhibit the production of SHBG from the liver and increase its excretion, whereas estrogens have the opposite effect. Estrogens stimulate the production of SHBG and inhibit its excretion. So this is why women have significantly higher levels of SHBG than men do. So men who maybe have low testosterone and elevated estrogen, which can be common again in liver disease, or men who are carrying quite a lot of body weight, fat cells, which possess the aromatase enzyme significantly more than other types of cells, that can all cause increases in SHBG. Another important factor is that insulin is a primary modulator of SHBG. Insulin drives down the production of SHBG. What can oftentimes happen is you'll have chaps who come in and they're on a low carb diet like the ketogenic diet or carnivore or they may just be restricting calories in general so they're in a calorie deficit. All three of those states promote significant reductions in insulin and what can happen there is SHBG is driven up because the circulating level of insulin is now extremely low if carbohydrate consumption is little to nothing. That's one of the common things we see at actually guys who are on ketogenic low carb diets which they think are really healthy and are actually going to make them stronger and like better in the gym and leaner obviously it seems to be very effective at weight loss for a lot of guys but one of the big things is that it can actually reduce their free testosterone level quite considerably and we see quite a few guys who actually end up having low testosterone symptoms because they are on a ketogenic diet and there is a lot of evidence in the scientific literature that ketogenic diets carnivore diets zero carb diets etc all do lead to significant increases in testosterone but the vast majority of these studies investigate total testosterone and they don't understand the nuance of total versus free so if you get a significant increase in total testosterone but it doubles your SHBG, there's a good chance that the net change to free testosterone is going to be negative and actually decrease. That's one of the first things we always ask when someone comes through and, and they've got very elevated levels of SHBG, specifically what, what's your diet like? And very often they are on ketogenic diets. And then, yeah, in terms of elevations, the only other primary contributor to my knowledge is simply genetics. There are certain genetic polymorphisms that decrease the, the rate at which SHBG is metabolized or broken down. So you can have a somewhat normal production of SHBG but if the half-life of that molecule is now significantly extended it's going to lead to an accumulation per se of SHBG in the blood which again can lead to downstream decreases in, in free testosterone. And then to track back to insulin obviously low insulin can lead to elevations in SHBG but conversely if somebody is insulin resistant their cells are insensitive to insulin so their beta cells in the pancreas have to produce an excess amount of insulin and in able to get serum glucose down after a carbohydrate heavy meal that can have a opposite effect whereby SHBG is suppressed and low SHBG is used for a marker for insulin resistance but also conditions in women like polycystic ovarian syndrome which is marked by insulin resistance so that is another cause of too low SHBG. Conversely to, with regards to thyroid function, conversely to hyperthyroidism causing elevated SHBG, underactive thyroid can cause too low SHBG. And then beyond genetic polymorphisms and liver issues like we mentioned before, the other main cause of too low SHBG is inappropriate protocols on testosterone or past anabolic steroid uses, androgens 
inhibit the production of SHBG and increase the excretion. If a man has a history of using non-aromatizable androgens for performance enhancing purposes, which we obviously don't condone, but we do have a lot of men that come to us, drugs like Proviron or Anavar or Winstrol or things like that can all heavily, heavily suppress SHBG. If a man has been using testosterone and they're injecting too infrequently, they might be injecting every two weeks, once per week, that can cause a huge temporary spike in serum testosterone that produces super physiological levels of androgens for a few days or a week or depending on how infrequently they're injecting and that period of, of super physiological levels can also lead to suppression of SHBG which is why one of the reasons why our doctors promote more frequent injections of testosterone twice a week three times a week all the way through to daily sometimes because it doesn't have that same suppressive effect on, on SHBG. So just to round it off, I guess the important thing there is that regardless of whether you're on treatment or not, you really need to look after yourself and make sure that the rest of your lifestyle factors are all in place. You know, you can have good testosterone levels, but if you're drinking too much alcohol, impacting your liver health, not getting enough sleep, not eating properly, then it's all going to impact how effective your treatment is, but also how high or low your free testosterone level is. So thanks a lot, Tom. If you've got any other ideas for videos that you'd like, then please leave them below in the comments. As always please like the video and subscribe below and we will see you next time.